Hi, my name is Vivian Jovet. I'm the team lead for Coder Studio development team at Toro. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can mock a REST API with Toro Integrate and Coder Studio. When designing a REST API, there is two ways to go. You can first create the services and the logic of your API and implement it, and then later on expose those services as a REST API. The second way to go is by first designing the API and uh, your domain model. And then uh, once you're happy with it, you create the services and implement the logic. So the advantage of the uh, design first API is that uh, you can have a person designing uh, the API and the domain model. And then you can have another developer that is maybe doing the Android application or web application. And then maybe a third developer that would be implementing the API. So when the person designing the API is changing the domain model or changing uh, the design of the API, the developer is doing the Android application or the web application can quickly react to the changes in the API and validate them. If the developer would implement the services, would have to implement the changes every time, that would take way too much time and that would not be an efficient way to develop uh, your application. So I'm going to show you how you can do that style of development with Coder Studio. So we're going to create a very simple API for the demonstration. I'm going to create a new integrate package here. I'm going to name it library API. Then I'm going to click the code folder, new loop API. Then I'm going to select publish next. And we're going to name it library API. Make sure you have the type REST API that is selected and then click finish. All right, so now we are in the REST API editor and I'm going to press the dot key to trigger content assist and add a path. So our first path uh, will be for retrieving a book using an ID. So we're going to name it uh, slash book slash and then uh, use uh, the ID path parameter. Press enter. For the base path, I'm going to change that to something a bit better, uh, slash library. Next, we're going to add an operation. So we'll only use a get operation. So I'm going to select that here. And now we can create a new service for our operation. But the service that we are going to create won't have any logic inside. So it won't have any uh, code or implementation. So we're going to name that uh, get book and finish. Next thing, uh, you see that there is an error here because we don't have the path parameter for that. So we're going to add that here. Parameter, path. Then we're going to add a new property. And then we, it's going to be a string. I'm going to name it ID. Next one uh, is for the response. So we will have two response, one for 200 and one for 404. So again, with content assist, response, 200. And then we're going to add a property, and that's going to be a model. But we're going to uh, use the model from markup. So we're going to do that with uh, JSON. And I'm going to just copy a piece of JSON that I already created. So uh, it's um, JSON that represents the book in the library. So it has an idea, title, author, and published. I'm going to paste that in there. And you can see that I already have a group model that's representing that JSON that is created. And uh, for the published field here, it's a date. So I want I want it to be a date instead of string. So I can right click on it, convert to, and then date. And you can see that now it has a calendar icon. So it's changed. So let's click finish. And then we can rename it. So I'm going to name that uh, book. Then the next one is the description. So we're going to say returns a book with that ID. All right. Next one is the 404 response. So same thing, response 404. We're going to add a new property, but this time we're going to we're going to choose an existing one. So we're going to choose the API response model. And I'm going to uh, rename that not found. For the description, we're going to say uh, no book, no book found. All right. So now we have um, an operation with two response and we would like to mock it. 
Uh, so you can see that we have body mock data and headers mock data filled here, but they are grayed out, so they are not enabled yet. To enable them, you need to go to the mock field over here and set it to true. And once I do that, you can see that the operation has a mock here. It says that it's mock and now the two fields are enabled. So let's first mock the 200 response. So I'm gonna click here. And uh, I have this dialog here where I can configure my mock data. There is three types of mock data that can be set. So uh, text, JSON, or XML. And you can see that uh, for JSON and XML, they are pre-populated based on uh, the model that we created here. So we're going to paste our JSON here, the one that we used earlier, and click OK. For the body mock data of the not found response, similar. We won't need the warning here. And we're going to say not found and then no book with that ID uh, found. Press enter. All right, so now we have our configured mock REST API. We're going to save that. Uh, to test that, we're going to invoke it in the HTTP client. So to open the HTTP client, you can click on the double arrow button in the main toolbar. And then you'll get a new view here for the HTTP client. And we're just going to simply select the operation and drag it into it. So now I have a request that is configured for it. You can see that I have my path here, slash API, slash library, slash book, and, um, and the ID. And you can see also that I have an extra parameter here, the group response code. So that response code is used to mock the response code. So if I give it a value of 200, I will get the 200 response. And if I give it a value of 400, I'll get the 400 response. So let's give, give a value to the ID and send the request. So you can see I get a response here uh, with the mock data that I that I gave it. And we can try also the 404. Send that again. And now I get a 404 status and the response that I said as mock data. So now let's say that um, suddenly we want to add a field to the book model and we want to mock that out. So we can just simply go back to the mock data and say that we want to add uh, maybe languages. Uh, so we can do something like this. We could do fr um, and, and then maybe something like this. And then press OK. Now I'm going to save again. Uh, set again the 200 response code and then send it. And you can see that now I have my response with the new field that I add. So that's really handy when you want to try out uh, how the application behaves with new fields and things like that. And another cool thing about it is that currently I set the mock data with JSON and by default I get a re um, response in JSON. But what you can actually do is, for example, add an accept header and use uh, application XML. And then I'm going to send the request again and you're going to see what happened. So now you're going to see that instead of having a uh, JSON response, I actually get an XML response with all the fields that I added without having to change the mock data to, to XML. So it can actually output your mock data to different data type. Next thing that we can do is mock the headers as well. So I can set a value like, like this. So let's call it uh, x custom 200, say like this, press OK. And then same thing for the 404. And let's say x custom 404, and then test. All right, let's save again. Let's invoke it. And let's take a look at the header. So now you can see that over here, I have my X custom 200 header with the value. And if I change the value to 404 and send that again, 
you see that I have my other custom header. And um, so when you mock your API, on the top of being able to develop quickly and design your API, you also get out of the box Swagger and Open API definition. So you can see over here in the preview, I get my Swagger definition. I get my Open API definition. And we can see that, for example, we have the getbook operation over here. Uh, and we also have the models for it that are defined in here. So we didn't, didn't have to implement any services or code anything for to get that. We get it out of the box. And this operation can actually be consumed and uh, you'll get uh, the mock data when you consume it. So that, that's really great. So that's all for this video and thanks for watching.